afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and thanks for joining us on Canal de English for yet another edition of the 1 p.m. news in summary. A suicide bomb attack has hit the far north region of Cameroon today, precisely at Daboe in the Mayosava division. Reports say several people who were wounded in the attack have been transported to several district hospitals in that region for medical in attention. We bring you more information about this suicide bomb attack as it unfolded in the far north region during a subsequent edition of the news. In education, Secondary Education Minister Marcel Ngale Bibehen yesterday launched week-long activities in prelude to bilingualism day in Cameroon, the event of at the Mary Albert College at Kumoyaunde was marked by a showcase of bilingualism in sketches, songs, and dances. The 12th edition of the Bilingualism Day has been placed under the theme Bilingualism, a driving force for promoting excellence and social inclusion. Minister Jean Ernest Gale Bibier comes back on the significance of the Bilingualism Day to Cameroonian. He was talking to a reporter, Beatrice Ngamu. We are here today to launch the edition, the 12th edition of uh, National Week of Bilingualism. As you may know, these celebrations come weekly after a few days after the publication of the head of state decree which promotes bilingualism and multiculturalism. By taking this important decree, the head of state wants all Cameroonians to, mobilize, to be mobilized around the bilingualism. It's why we came here today. And we thought that to appreciate, to better appreciate this, we have to visit some schools in the central region to be sure that uh, of the effectiveness of the bilingualism. After this, we saw that we are, I can say that we are very, very satisfied of what we saw and what we heard. Cameroon's main opposition party, the SDF, has called for the unconditional release of all persons arrested in Anglophone Cameroon during the ongoing social crisis. This is one of the 10-point resolutions arrived at after Saturday's next meeting held in Bamenda. Presided at by the chairman, Nijon Frundi, the National Executive Committee of the SDF strongly condemned the current spate of arrests, which they described as kidnapping and abduction, ferrying suspects to Yaoundé out of their areas of residence for trial under the civil law instead of the common law. The Bamenda Neck Conclave equally accused government of violating international conventions by depriving residents of Anglophone Cameroon of internet connection as a result of her failure to resolve the Anglophone lawyer teacher's crisis. Members of the NEC also empowered their chairman to engage in discussions with religious, political, as well as opinion leaders in a bid to get the country out of the present crisis. Last weekend's meeting was the first after the appointment of Senator Tumelu Zhang as the new Secretary General. In sports, a press conference by the Indomitable Lions of Cameroon is expected to take place today in Mwanda, Gabon, before they continue training ahead of their semi-final game on Thursday against Ghana. Amongst other questions, they shall be answering the boys of Coach Hugo Bruce shall also be answering questions uh, expected to clarify doubts following rumors that they boycotted the training session yesterday over issues of unpaid match bonuses. It is purported that Benjamin Mokanjo and his teammates are demanding match bonuses for the match they played last Saturday against Senegal, a total of 15 million francs CFA each. Reports say they turned down 300 francs CFA put aside by government for each of them to qualify for the semi-final match, the sum they had agreed upon in Yaoundé before leaving for Gabon. Team coach Hugo Bruce and some of his players are expected to thus clarify this doubt among other issues before Thursday's semi-final match against the Black Stars of Ghana. 
In news, out of Cameroon, Morocco has been readmitted as a member of the African Union after months of intense lobbying. Morocco left the organization in 1984 after it recognized the independence of Western Sahara regarded as Morocco as part of its historical territory. It was the only country in Africa that was not a member of the continental body. AU leaders also voted the chairman for Chadian Foreign Minister Faki Muhammad to be the next head of the AU Commission. Mr. Faki Muhammad beat Kenya's top diplomat Amina Mohamed. The race is usually settled behind the scene before the vote, but this week they went up to seven rounds of voting. Outgoing Commissioner South Africa's Kusazani Dalmini Zuma stayed at the job for an extra six months after leaders failed to agree on a candidate to replace her last July. Report says some five members of a controversial religious sect in Benin have died from aspiration after they locked themselves up in a prayer room and burnt incense and charcoal waiting for the world to end. The sect whose name in French translates as the Very Holy Church of Jesus Christ of Baname has thousands of followers across the West African state and is strongly opposed to the local voodoo culture. The group's young leader, Vicentia Chamvukini, known by her followers as a daddy perfect, has proclaimed herself a god. Elsewhere, Donald Trump has fired the acting attorney general after she questioned the legit legitimacy of his immigration ban. Salias, who had been appointed under Barack Obama, earlier ordered Justice Department lawyers not to enforce the president's executive order. Donald Bonte, U.S. attorney for the Eastern District of Virginia, replaces her as acting attorney general. He has redirected the department to enforce Mr. Trump's order. In a statement, the White has said Mrs. Yards had betrayed the department. Still in news, out of Cameroon, Canadian police have charged a French-Canadian student over the fatal shooting of six Muslim worshippers at a mosque in Quebec. Alexandra Bissonnette faces six counts of first-degree murder and five attempted murder. The 27-year-old briefly appeared in Quebec City Court over Sunday evening's attack during evening prayer at the Quebec Islamic Cultural Center. Vigils have been held across Canada to commemorate those killed and injured during the attack. Now to end the news, Israel's Prime Minister has accused Iran of carrying out a missile test in fragile violation of a UN Security Council resolution. Benjamin Netanyahu said he would raise renewing sanctions when he meets U.S. President Donald Trump in February. Iran has carried out several such tests since a 2015 nuclear deal which relaxed sanctions against the country. It is not yet clear what type of missile was launched or if it explicitly violated the UN resolution. A 2010 resolution which barred Iran from undertaking any work of missile capable of delivering nuclear warheads was terminated after the nuclear deal with six war powers was implemented. It is on that note that we call it quits for this edition of the 1 p.m. news. In summary, on Canada English, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching. More news will be yours at 3 p.m. Stay tuned.